companions lost their homes, lost their livelihoods, lost their land. And they should have a right to return to wherever they come, came from originally, if that's what they want to do. You know, any Jew from anywhere in the world, and even non-Jews who get a week's training in how to be Jewish, can come to Israel and immediately become Israeli citizens. But Palestinians who've lived there for generations are not allowed to return to their land. I don't think that's fair. I don't think that's democratic. And your next second question was? My second question is, um, right now, as of like the modern time, like we're, we're 2010 right now. Right now you're having we're, a Right now we're in 2010, and looking towards the future, we want to find a solution. Um, I know that the diabetic sanction, the non-violent movement is obviously you know, is pretty strong right now, but is there another movement, is there another thing we can do together versus working against each other to come forth with a new, a new solution, to get peace as soon as possible, and to make something that, you know, so this won't happen next year, this won't happen the year after. Like, I would love to come to this campus, and there's no wall. There's, you know, we have, there's, two, there's two states, we work together. UCLA, for example, the, uh, the MSU and the Jewish students right now are working together on a, a, a comedy night, they're raising money for awareness, they're working together. Is there something we can do right now together, both organizations, to help both people move forward versus, you know, just saying what's wrong with the past, what's wrong right now? Well, I think any means towards peace if it's really sincere and honest, is, is desirable. And BDS, I think, is, is, um, it has been proven, not only in South Africa, but I understand in other places also, uh, as an effective nonviolent tool to bring about change in the government and in its policies. And so I strongly support BDS. That's the best we have at this point. You know, there have been lots and lots of meetings and peace processes, but all of that has led to not, nothing. Because Israel, I don't think, really, truly wants peace. What they really want is the greater Israel. You know, you look at the flag of Israel, and it's a white flag with two blue stripes on either side. And what does that represent? You know, Israel doesn't have any borders. But I think it represents, and Israel doesn't have any borders purposely, because they are still trying to increase and enlarge the land that would be Israel. And I think the one blue stripe represents the Mediterranean, the other blue stripe represents the Jordan River, or maybe even the Euphrates, or even beyond. Is there and there's no room between those two stripes for the Palestinian people. Um, that's it? Those are your questions. Any more questions? Uh, do you believe in two states for two people? And if so, do you not think it's important to get both sides to the, the negotiating table? Should that not be the work of this campus? Should they not be working real hard to make sure that uh, both sides come to the table, that this White House, that this State Department does everything possible to make sure that these two sides, both sides, come to the negotiating table? What's wrong with that? There's nothing wrong with coming to the table and negotiating, but the, the parties that come to the table have to be really committed to wanting to resolve the problem. And I don't think on the part of the Israelis, the commitment is there. They are interested and have been interested and pursued a peace process for years. And what is a peace process? It's a delaying tactic. Let's talk, talk, talk. While we're talking, we're building more settlements. We're building more roads for Jews only. We're destroying Palestinian homes to make room for, for Israelis. And yes, let's talk some more. So on one hand, you know, let's talk, but while we're talking, we're just going. And, you, and as far as your other question, do I support a two-state solution? It's not for me to decide what the Palestinians or what the Israelis want. It is up to them to decide that. You know, too often, too often decisions are made for someone else 
or for another country. What, it doesn't matter. I do not have any, whatever the Israelis and the Palestinians want, that is what I will support. If that is truly what they want. It is not what my opinion is. It's not what I think is the best thing. But you have these feelings. I have the feeling that the Palestinians. Not everything. I have Israel needs to be punished. Don't you also have feelings about what the end goal is? What's your end goal, Hetty Epstein? What's your end peace, goal? Peace, 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 peace for everyone. Two states or one peace state? One question per person. Question. We'll give other people a chance for it, and we'll come back. Um, Kelly, um, you mentioned earlier that, uh, that Hamas is democratically elected. Does that make your actions legitimate? The fact that they take the fact that their charter calls for the end of the state of Israel and death to Jewish people everywhere, and they have not changed their charter. Who is Israel supposed to be negotiating with? Israelis want peace. Who do they have to negotiate with? Your question, but she has a right to answer it too, so please wait until she fully answers it, and please don't ask another question. We'll come back to you at this time. One question per person, please. One more question. We have time for one more. Um, you're, you're pretty well traveled. You go around to different campuses and different places to speak. Um, over the past few years, or however long you've been, you've been working on this, have you noticed that a shift or a trend um, a different direction amongst students or people in general towards this issue? Um, yes. Um, in fact, I was at Irvine, at UC Irvine, in 2007, in May of 2007. Someone asked me, have you ever been here before? And I said, no, I don't think so. And then I Googled myself. <laughs> I was here in 2007, I forgot. Uh, yes, I have noticed a difference on the campuses. And not only on the campus, but just generally. And that change has really come about, I think, as a result of what happened in Gaza a little more than a year ago. I think it happened as a result of the Goldstone Report. Uh, and it's happened, I think, as it's beginning to happen because of BDS. Uh, I was just energized and amazed at what took place at UC Berkeley just very recently. I was there when uh, this, the attempt was made to override the veto. Um, and it was an amazing night. It was an all-nighter. It was over at 7.30 in the morning. I mean, that shows real commitment because very few people left, and there were like about 900 or 1,000 people in that room. Uh, so yes, I see change, and as uh, my father said, and which I borrowed, and the faint sound of freedom ringing far away, but it's not quite as far away anymore as it was in 2007 when I was here, and it's coming closer. And Thank you very much for coming.